Hey guys, welcome back, Ricky here. All right, so this I think is going to be the last Whetstone video of 2018. All right, so today we are talking about really the stars of the Whetstone world, which is the kind of the polishing Whetstones in the 5,000 to 8,000 category. Anything below 5,000, you're not getting a very high mirror polish, and anything over 8,000, you're just spending a lot of money. So I kind of divided this setup into the 5,000, 6,000 category and the 8,000 category. Now, I didn't go 10,000 this year because 10,000 grit, once you go into the 10,000 grit rating, the prices jump 30, 40, 50% higher than your 8,000 grit stones, but you're not getting any sort of performance upgrade or performance increase. I've done a number of sharpening tests on 8,000, 10,000, 12,000, and even 20,000 grit stones. And in terms of sharpness, uh, real use in the kitchen, they don't feel any different. So for me, 8,000 is really, it's really where I think the best bang for your value is, you know, down to 6,000 grit or 5,000 grit if you want a lower polishing stone. First stone here is the Arashiyama 6,000. This stone here was one of my top picks in 2017 because of two things, price and performance. It gives you a really nice mirror polish, but it's just not very hard. It's relatively soft. Once you start using other stones, it will show. But for an everyday 6,000 grit polish, it's a really good polish and overall a really good stone. All right, so the next one we've got here is the Debato LD601. The number one selling factor of this stone to me is its snappiness. Most 6,000 and even 5,000 grit stones just don't have that, that snappy, that organic feeling that you want from, let's say, a natural stone. This one has it. Very responsive for a 6,000 grit stone. It doesn't feel anything like a traditional, uh, typical 6,000 grit stone. I like this stone a lot. And if you guys like, you know, fast cutting stones or stones that have a very nice snappy feel to them, even at the 6,000 grit mark, you should consider this stone. Uh, this is the Naniwa 6000 Diamond Stone. I have found them to be really nice cutting stones, especially on knives with a heat treatment of 65 and above. I've sharpened ZDP knives, uh, 189 with 66 Rockwell, and then the HAP 40 steels with 65 Rockwell, and they all have felt great. I did sharpen some knives with a 62 and 63, and they didn't feel bad on these stones. They just didn't feel great and as snappy as what you would find on a Chosera or the Professional. Uh, wet stones. In terms of a finished quality, it's not the highest polish of a 6,000 grit stone, which is fine. But in terms of a 6,000 grit performance stone, it's the fastest cutting 6,000 grit stone I have used. Definitely more money than most people want to spend on a wet stone. Uh, these stones all cost in the high 100s, so I see them for as low as one. I want to say 160 to as high as 240 per stone. But in terms of a dollar to performance ratio, unless you have lots of knives, I'm talking at least a couple thousand dollars worth of knives that are in the 65 range of Rockwell and above, these stones aren't worth your money. I've thought about putting together a natural stone series where I talk about all the best natural stones I've tested in 2018, but in all honesty, I haven't tested that many. And of the stones I've tested, none of them really wowed me except this stone here. And this is the Arkansas Black, the hard black, and it is an amazing stone. It was the biggest shocker of 2018, in my opinion. And I think, if you guys can tell, this is one of my favorite stones to use, period. Not just in synthetics or naturals versus synthetics. Just as a polishing stone, I really love this stone. I don't really know what the grit rating is. It's considered hard, so it can be ranging anywhere from 3,000 to 5,000 grit. I don't think it's anything above that because you don't really get a mirror polish on the stone. I understand why people love sharpening unnatural wet stones. And for me, it has nothing to do with speed or the esoteric connection you have with the earth <laughs> at all. I love the responsiveness I got on the stone. I will sharpen some 64 and 65 Rockwells and even 66. I know a lot of you guys have been asking how these stones fare with higher Rockwell knives. Um, I will test them out at some point in 2019, so I'll get to it. Just keep on my case and keep asking me about it. I will, <laughs> I will do it at some point. Uh, but so far, up to 62 Rockwell, I can really recommend these stones. All right, so this is my Rika 5000. This was essentially, it was and it still is my favorite soaking 5000 grit whetstone. It's a Kasumi finished stone, so it gives you no mirror polish, which in my opinion is really nice. I love kind of that Kasumi hazy look on knives. Um, high polish looks fine, but if not done right, it will look kind of cheap. In terms of performance, this stone here, very snappy, very responsive. It's a soaking stone, which takes about 15 to 20 minutes in terms of soaking time. Anything over that, the stone kind of feels a little bit softer than it should. 
And so to me, the 15, 20 minute mark is where I would leave the stone. And every stone will vary. Sometimes people will feel like these stones work better at 30, 40 minutes, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, this one here is broken because I lent it to somebody earlier, I think this year or, or late last year, and it was dropped. And, <laughs> and so that happened. Um, but it still works fine. There's nothing wrong with it. All right, this is the Kramer 5000. The Kramer 5000 to me was a pretty good stone. It was... Um, a stone that I was very suspicious about because I love the Chosera and the Nanoa Professional 3000. Um, these are ceramic based stones. And even though this is technically formulated after the Nanoa Choseras or the Nanoa Professional 5000, it feels very different. It feels a bit more snappy. It feels a bit harder, a bit more dense than the Chosera version. And so from a performance standpoint, I find it to be very nice. So overall, the Kramer by Zwilling 5000 is a decent stone. The Chosero 5000 is a stone that I kind of... This stone is one of the stones I really do have a love-hate relationship with. First off, the mirror polish is actually really nice on this stone. The negative for me for this stone here is the Chosera 3000 because the Chosera 3000 has been one of my favorite stones of all time. As a matter of fact, in 2017, the Chosero 3000 was my whetstone of the year. And so coming from that stone, going to this stone, I expected it to perform very similar, but giving me a better polish. However, it is nowhere near as snappy as the Chosera 3000, is nowhere near as fast as the Chosera 3000. So to me, it was a huge letdown. And also comparing this to the Kramer 5000, the Kramer 5000 is a much better feeling stone. So that's why to me, this Chosera 5000 just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, but if you find these on sale and you don't really care about having a stone that is very snappy at the 5,000 grit level, it will give you a really nice polish. But to me, there are other options out there that are less costly that will perform just as well, if not better. My three favorite stones in this category here is the Eureka 5000, the uh, Arkansas Black, and the Suhiro Debato 6000. LD601. <laughs> um, this stone is going to fall. I'm going to hold on to it. This is my favorite soaking stone. It's very snappy, very fast cutting, and just gives you a nice Kasumi finish, you know, edge. Uh, Arkansas Black, uh, very snappy, very responsive. You cannot get a better feeling stone than this stone here. And once you factor in the price and the fact that this is a natural stone, it makes this stone that much better. So overall, I love this stone. The 6000 grit uh, Debato is the snappiest 6000 grit splash and go I have ever used. Uh, well, second to the Diamond Stone. Also, it is half the price of the Diamond Stone. So to me, this is a much better stone overall than the 9 Watt Diamond Stone. And it's much snappier than the Arashiyama 6000. So to me, this is a better stone. All right, so this is the Naniwa 8000. Uh, this is the Snow White Stone. This stone here is probably the, I would say, the most highly regarded 8,000 grit stone in the world. Uh, everyone knows of the stone. Everyone talks about it. I will say though, after using all these other wet stones uh, that are available that are coming onto the market, I will say that the 8,000 grit mm, formula of the Snow White is starting to feel slightly aged. And I think the other thing that's starting to work against the stone is the price. Um, you'll find them ranging from 80 to as high as 130, 140 dollars. That is way too much for an 8,000 grit stone. In terms of usage, after the second or third time, it felt better. The first couple times I used it, it just felt like the surface was still being worked out. It felt a little rough. Um, not quite 8,000 grit, or not quite the level of 8,000 grit I was expecting. But after the third or fourth time using it, it felt a lot smoother. I had more control of my knife on the stone. The first couple times, the knife felt a little sticky. So it could have been the knife, it could have been me. Um, overall, a very nice stone. The only major negative about the stone is the price. The Shapton Pro. This is the Shapton Pro 8000. In 2017, it was my best pick for value. And in 2018, I think it still holds that spot. Um, overall, it's very nice. The quality of the finish you'll get is very, very good for the price. I think these stones range from $45 to $55. So the two things that matter to me most at the lower grit level is speed, and feedback. At the higher grit level, feedback and speed both go out the window. So at the 8,000 grit level, this is a very good stone for your dollar. Um, you will not find anything wrong with this stone. 
All right, so here is the Shopton Glass 8000. Uh, this stone here I've used a lot in the last two years. The ceramic 8000 grit stone feels very different than other 8000 grit stones out there. It's They're a bit more snappy and a bit more um, just lively feeling than the average 8000 grit stone. So to me, that's actually really important. Uh, you know, it's again, it's not crucial that it is very snappy, that it is faster than other 8000 grit stones. And also it's very dense and very slow wearing. It's probably one of those stones that if you bought to use only as the 8000 grit polishing stone, you will probably never have to worry about flattening the stone like ever. So that's also to me something that should be considered when you're looking at an 8000 grit stone. And the last stone we've got here is the Kitayama 8000. Uh, it's in the very beginning when I first used the stone, I felt like it was too close in terms of overall performance to the Arashiyama 6000. But after using it more often and uh, testing different Rockwell knives, I feel like this stone is a bit more dense and a bit slightly better in terms of overall response than the 6000. Um, the highest Rockwell knife I've sharpened on this uh, whetstone is the Shun Hero SG2 with the Rockwell of 64. And it handled it just fine. I mean, I felt like it was a, a really nice polish overall. I will continue using the stone in 2019 and uh, you know sharpen some knives in the higher Rockwell range and hopefully give you a better comparison of this stone versus the shot and glass stones and the Suhiro stones uh, as well. To me, the Snow White is just too expensive of a stone um, relative to performance compared to the other stones here. So to me, it's not the best buy. If you want the best buy, it is the Shafton Pro 8000. Very good performing. It does exactly what it's supposed to at a very affordable price. The Shafton Glass 8000, uh, a great finish overall. It has a more refined feel than the Shafton Pro. It is much denser than the Shafton Pro stone, but at this level, you're not going to be wearing your stones down very quickly, so that shouldn't be too much of a factor. The Kitayama 8000 is a stone that I have really come to respect and really come to enjoy. It gives you pretty much the same finish quality as the Shafton Glass stone. So the Shafton Glass stone, it is a ceramic based stone, so you will feel that they it feels just a bit snappier than the Kitayama. Um, I think the Kitayama is slightly more forgiving of a stone than the glass stone. If you really like the way ceramic stones feel, if you have always sharpened very high Rockwell knives or honey knives, and you wanted that very dense feel on your stone, then it would be the Shafton Glass 8000. It's really hard to pick a clear winner in this category here. I think if you want just absolute performance overall, considering price as well, would be the Kitayama 8000. If you want the best value, definitely would be the Shafton Pro. Yeah, so if you guys want to see like the absolute best knives and best whetstones I've used in 2018, let me know in the comments, give the video a thumbs up, and I will do that. Um, but other than that, the next couple of videos that you guys will see will be the best chef knives, best nakiris, uh, best pair of knives and best utility knives. Uh, I think I'll compile all those categories into two separate videos. Um, but that is it for this video. Thank you guys for being here and I'll catch you in the next one.